I'm going to do an exercise for American Mahjong using the National Mahjong League card. This exercise is called Charleston Modeling. The purpose is to practice making decisions with a mock Charleston. The goal will always be to target multiples. If you don't have multiples, look for the predominant pattern, gather tiles until a multiple forms, and then target the multiple. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. One. We're going to do this exercise three times. We'll alternate between dealer and non-dealer, so we'll get 14 tiles, then 13, then 14, and I'll create a mock Charleston with no jokers for each one. We have a flower, east and south, green dragon, five, six, seven in bams, pair five, pair seven, one, two, four, eight in cracks, and an eight dot. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I would target the multiples. Five, seven. We have no nine, so I wouldn't think about playing big odds right now. I would focus on consecutive run, and we have a six. We do have the corresponding dragon, so we might be able to use that. Since we're building around five, six, seven, we might keep the four. Five, six, seven, we could keep the eights. So I would probably pass those, maybe those three, five, six, seven. With this particular run, we really can't use the eights. Let's see, five, six, seven, unless we get a nine and let a five go, we could do single pair Pung, Kong, and then a Kong with a nine. With a four, we wouldn't be able to use five, six, seven. So probably we could make this a little better by letting the four go. Even though it's in a range around the multiples, four, five, six, seven, but we could do five, six, seven, eight. So let's start here. We have an eight and a five. We do have tiles we can pass, but I, typically don't pass two wins. There are a lot of win hands. So I try not to do that. Five, six, seven, eight. I think I would probably let the five crack go or maybe the eight. Let's let the eight go. Consecutive run is an easier category. So if we let a two eight go, that's a little more difficult because there's such a big span of numbers. Whoa, look what we got. A seven and a six. Five, six, seven. I would let these go. Focus on five, six, seven. Maybe we can use the dragon if we get a four bam or an eight dot, or eight, four bam or eight bam. We need probably the four bam because we have a pung of sevens here. So let's, Break up the eight and pass a five. Five, five, six, seven. We have tiles we can pass so we can still keep that dragon. Even though we have a pung here, probably we're not gonna use that because the concealed hand, the shape is pung, pair, pair, pung, and we have a pung, pair, pung. So to leverage the multiple, probably 
Kongs with flowers would be best. We got the four. Oh my goodness, that's a surprise. Now we could maybe let the five go. Play five, six, seven, dragon. We have tiles we can pass. Okay, two, eight, nine. This is pretty, but it's not helpful. So we're gonna let it go. Oh man, look at that. Wow, we got a flower. This is one reason why you don't wanna pass flowers. I would let that go and play five, six, seven Kongs with a pair of flowers. I would pass these in the optional. Even though there's nothing in here, we could just follow through. Three discards. All we need is one good pick and we'll be set. We could Kong here. We just need a good pick right here. If you would have done something differently with these tiles, right? Pull one in the comment section below and let me know what you would do with these tiles. We have a west, a flower, one, three, four, five, eight in cracks, pair three, pair four, pair eight. We have a one dot, two, seven, nine in bams. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on? And what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I would build around the most of my multiples, and that would be three, four. Three, four. The three with the eight won't work. The four with the eight won't work without a two, six in one suit. So I think I would probably break up the eight, focus on cracks or one, two, three, four of some kind. So I would pass probably these three first. Focus on little numbers. We got a flower, big number. Let's pass these three. Big number, little number. Pair, one, one, five, five, two, one, three, four, five, pair nine. We did form another multiple, but we have no sevens. We have one, three, five, no seven. So I would just break that up. This is isolated and so is the five. So I would just break that up. Seven, six, six, seven, three, four, three, four, we might be able to use the six because you want to gather a range of four numbers, four to five. With three, four, maybe we could have used that five. Probably could have been better to break up the one, which we're going to do now. I think we're still going to be okay. Let's keep that. We have a pair of flowers, so I would try to use that. So we have three, four, five flowers probably. So let's pass these three. Uh -huh. Oh, five, six, three, four, five, six. And we have tiles we can pass. We'd have to throw away a pair of flowers though. I don't know if I would do that. This one, is isolated, so that might have to go. Let's discard these. Okay, here's a six. 
and a six in a different suit, really this one can go. And I would not pass three ones. No, that is very risky. We have three, four, five flowers. If we get a red dragon, maybe we can do the concealed hand. Three, four, five. I think I would just let those go. Probably pass one of each suit. We got it. Now here, one, three, maybe one, six dragon. Focus on three, four, five, six concealed. No keepers. All right. We have five discards. Look at those bams. But we have a hand here with no gaps. Three, four, five, six dragon concealed. If you would have done something differently here, write pull two and what you would do with these tiles. Flower, north, pair red, one, three, seven in bams, two, five, six, seven in dots, one, three in cracks with a pair of threes. If these were your tiles, what would you focus on and what would be your first pass? If these were my tiles, I focus on the multiples. Three dragon, maybe little odds of some kind. So I would just hold all little tiles. One, three, five. Maybe pass those three. We actually have a hand in here. One, two, three, flower. Let's see what happens. One. Flower. Okay, so whatever we do, we're going to try to use that. I wonder if we could get some five cracks. We have a gap, but look, one, three, no five. I would keep those just to see what happens. Maybe we could think about let's see here. One, three, five, five. Let's keep the five and let these go. So let's pass two, seven, nine. No keepers. One, three, five. There is a offsuit dragon hand. One, three, three, five dragon. So maybe we should keep that. Let's pass one, three, seven. Okay, we got a three bam. That's not helpful, really. We want a three dot, probably, but really a five crack would be ideal. Let's pass these. No keepers, like numbers. I would break those up. Let's pass these three. Oh, seven crack. I wish that was a five. Here's a five. Oh, look, one, three, five, five. That's a hand right there. I would still keep that dragon. I probably would maybe pass the green. No keepers. I would pass these three for optional. We'll just go through the motions. Okay, we have 
four discards, joker bait, and a hand. Flowers, one, three, five, five. But I would keep these. If we get a five crack, this would be even better. So I would keep those for as long as I can. Let those go first. If you would have done something differently with these tiles, write it in the comment section below with pull three. The purpose of the Charleston is to improve your dealt hand. Make the best decisions you can to gather tiles that support the strength of your hand, whether you have multiples or just the predominant pattern. In the end, focus on multiples because American Mahjong is a game of multiples. At the end of the Charleston, if you have four discards, I would say you would be a contender. If you have more than four discards, I'd say you'd be an underdog for that game. If you have less than four, you'd be a front runner. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.